Hey everybody, um, it's uh, Rob, one of the pastors at Lord of the Harvest. We're kind of doing things a little bit differently, but kind of the same. Um, we're still going to put our focus on the Lord and take this time to worship Him, even if we're not going to sing or anything. And just to give you some idea about today, um, we're on... We've been reading Psalms day after day for over a year now. Um, today we're on Psalm 139. Um, but we also had a time of prayer weekly that's led by an apostolic leader by the name of Reggie Holiday, who's a part of both Master Builders and the Numa, Numa Network, excuse me. And um, anyway, Reggie led today's prayer and there were some things that impacted me and I'm, I'm going to talk about just for a couple seconds about a, a failure of mine that I always try to teach, I guess, you know, um, Reggie's prayer was based on, uh, John five nineteen and 20. And, uh, he said, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the father doing for whatever the father does that the son does likewise for the father loves the son and shows him all that he himself is doing and greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. And you know, when I was a kid, I never caught the importance of the things my father tried to teach me. My father was a fireman and he was a, um, he also did a lot of carpentry. And I never, like he would try to include me on, on the carpentry stuff often. And I never caught on. And it, you know, I, just my failure, I was young at the time and I'm saying this is my failure, but I was young at the time and very immature and I never understood the importance of it. And I just, you know, it hit me when Reggie was praying today. And um, I just started thinking about that and started thinking about how, you know, especially in this time right now where we've got so much going on, um, you know, that you, you, you've got civil unrest still. You've got a, a lot of division in our country and, and, and a lot of tension in our country right now. And you've got people holding on to prophecies. I even heard some cockamamie scheme <laughs> through some channel this week that, you know, they're holding on to this prophecy about what, who should be president or who is president. And this one goofy one went so far as to say, you know, just to, I don't know if it's to justify the, you know, their legitimacy or what, but that actually... Trump is Joe Biden. I, I don't even get this. I, I, I don't get how this works. Um, you know, but I, it made me think about the foolishness. We're not, as a church, we're not doing what we see the Father doing. It's like we have a perception of what we think should be happening, and we keep holding on to that. And the Lord is really speaking this passage to us. I do nothing but what I see the Father doing. And this is an hour that we really need to be doing what we see the Father doing. And quite frankly, the Father is not doing American politics. The Father is doing his work. And the Father's work is really redeeming the lost, bringing the death, back to life and bringing those who have turned away from him back to relationship with him through the son. And so, I mean, I'm just thinking about this and, and, you know, in this hour, because of that prayer, Reggie prayed today. And I thought, like I said, I thought about myself as a son and how I missed so many things that my father was doing and so many things that my father was teaching me and how much it could, I could have, gain from my father's knowledge. And I think about right now and this time in history, 
And I'm, my prayer is, Lord, let me only be doing what I see the Father doing. You've adopted me as a son through the blood of Jesus. Let me only be doing what I see the Father doing. And that's just my thought and prayer for the church right now in this hour. It's that, that we wouldn't be trying to conform Jesus or God into our image, but that we would be transformed into his likeness. You know, that's, that's really, I mean, the son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the father doing. So that's my prayer in this hour. It, it, it's, it's just so necessary right now because there's just so much going on. And, and we get, we're, like I said, we're so caught up in what we think should be happening. And we sometimes make that God. But we need to know, Lord, what are your purposes in this hour? What are you calling us to do in this hour? What's really important to you, not to me, but to you, Lord? What are you about right now so that I can be about that too? So that's just kind of that thought on my head. And then, like I said, today's Psalm is 139. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought from afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. There is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, and it's high, and I can't attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, you are there, and your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they are all written, the days fashioned for me, when as of yet there were none of them. How precious are your thoughts also to me, God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When when I awake, I'm still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there's any wicked way in in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. So we as a church right now, in America, anyway, I, I I can't speak for the whole of the church, but see, we've we've taken that couple of verses at the end there. Um, you know, wicked depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men. 
for they speak wickedly against you. We've really gotten a hold of that. We hate what's evil, but Lord, we still don't know you well enough to know what is good. I believe that's a prayer that we need to, to pray in this hour. We, 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 we perceive, we understand what we perceive to be evil, but we really don't know enough of who is good. And you formed us, Lord, so we need to know you. So I, I you know, this is all kind of last minute here. Like I said, there are just some te technical difficulties that, you know, we couldn't overcome this morning. And, and so I'm really just flying off the cuff. And, and um, at the end of the day, I just feel like, you know, these couple of things, like I said, the seeing, seeing myself in, in, in that passage in John and saying, you know, I need to be more about my father's work and thinking about how much we think we're, you know, fighting against evil, but then I still see division in the church. I still see division among, you know, conservatives and liberals. I still see division amongst ethnicities. You know, when our division shouldn't be there. We should hate evil, but you know, the problem is, is we're looking so much in the flesh. You know, Ephesians talks about, about you're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. And, you know, we need to come back to some basics. See what the Father is doing. Do what the Father is doing. Live the example Jesus is living or had lived physically and is the Holy Spirit is calling us to live now and go from there and not focus on these things that, that cause division in our body. Learn to overcome those because we have a, we're called to have a testimony of Jesus. So Father God, we just come before you in Jesus' name. And I repent as a representative of, of your body. I repent for being foolish and not being about what my father's doing. Not seeing what he's doing so that I can go and do likewise. Lord, where I've been out of line, and like I talked about with my own father and learning things that he had tried to pass on to me, where I've been out of line and missed you, Father, forgive me. Where I've been astray in looking at my perception of what I think you're doing and not catching the greater message of what you're doing. Forgive me, Lord, and lead me back into you. I was formed, it's, it's, I was formed in your hand and I was washed in your blood and I'm created in your image. Lord, and I'm called to do what I see the Father doing. And I'm called to do what I saw Jesus doing. And I'm called to allow the Holy Spirit to do those things in this hour. Lord, forgive me for not doing those things. Break my concept, concepts, Lord. And I pray that you'd break the church's concepts of where we've missed you where we've held on to things in the flesh, where we've been astray, Lord, where we've thought things should go a certain way because of our comforts and our desires, and we've subjected, projected those things onto your will. Lord, forgive us for where we have not done what we saw the Father doing, for where we have, as a church have prophesied amiss and thought that if things went our way, 
rather than what you're really trying to do. Forgive us for where we've held on to things amiss. Forgive us, Lord, for those things and break them in us. Lord, we have, we have blinders on our eyes like a horse so that we run straight forward in a direction. But unfortunately, Lord, we're not on the racetrack right now. You know, and, and we need to be on the right track again. Father, remove the blinders from our eyes and guide us back to where you need us to be right now. Guide us to what you're truly doing. Because, Lord, I believe that what you're truly doing is, is so much bigger than, than what we see. It's so much bigger than our personal comforts than our political affiliations. It's so much bigger than, than our selfish desires. It's not what we think. Lord, I mean, I just sit and I think about action after action that I saw Jesus do. You know, and, and I've talked about the, the Canaanite woman, the Roman centurion, you know, and, and those are people that Jesus, when you were here, you credited their faith in you, yet they weren't of the chosen race. But you credited their faith in you, and you honored their requests. Lord, I believe in those stories and so many more. You were opening our eyes, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. You were opening our eyes to see things. And Lord, I believe as a church, we have not, seen them and it, it, it's more than just the race racial issue when I talk about that the ethnic issue Lord there's things that we have not seen there's things that we have missed so much and the comforting thought is out of Psalm 139 no matter where I go I can run to the highest point I can hide in the lowest point I can be in the air and the sea, it doesn't matter. You know where I am. And Lord, because of your blood, you redeemed us. And so I, I just pray, Father, that we would see these things that you're truly about, you know, that we would love the way you've called us to love, that we would lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters, but that we would lay down our lives for the lost, that we would understand someone else's hurts and wounds as, as more important than our comforts in this hour, and that you would be glorified through it. Lord, and I know there's people who are saying, well, the Lord said, I didn't come bring peace, but a sword, and I, I, I you know, et cetera, et cetera, and, and Lord, that's where we need to understand that we're not wrestling flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. And those powers and principalities are dividing us from each other. Lord, I, I just think about, you know, rain in an ocean and, you know, related to your blood. The ocean is, is the mass collection of the water, of the drops of rain. Lord, and we keep getting separated like drops, and a little drop can't do a lot, but that ocean can wash over things and, and, and create a change. A, and we've seen it with tsunamis and everything, the devastating effect of the ocean, of the power of you know, united water, if you will. But Lord, that redeeming effect of united blood, see blood flowing through our veins is all in unity and it creates life. Father God, create life in the body again that we would be in unity with you and be about your purposes to overcome the things that the devil is about, to overcome the things, the systems that are in the world and to win the lost by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Lord, 
break the divisions going on right now. Break the wounds going on right now. Like I said, Lord, we're, we're off track and we need to get back on track with you. So Father, our act of worship is to repent today. Lord, sometimes we sing songs to, to praise you, but today I believe our act of worship is to repent. We are, we've been off track and so many of us have still held on to the election and, 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 and I see this childish tit for tat, hashtag not my president, to this president as, as what we've thought, the lost or whatever, we're doing to quote unquote our president. Lord, I don't serve a president. I happen to live in a country where you've placed me to glorify you. And I pray that as a church, that we understand that we are placed in a land to glorify your name in this hour. And that you would break all the things off of us that are not of you so that we can be about our Father's work, so that we can do what we see the Father doing. Lord, you know, I... This is just the prayer of my heart. My, the act of worship today, Sunday's worship at Lord of the Harvest, is to repent for not doing what we see the Father doing. Lord, though we know there's nowhere we can run from you, we still need to be about what you're doing now. Lord, so let us take comfort in that we know there's nowhere we can go that you can't find us and let us be about your work. And Father, now that we've repented, I, I, there are requests that I want to throw before you. I'm not... <clears throat> there are people in our church, Lord, that are struggling and suffering. Lord, just this, the pandemic has pulled has taken that, like I talked about the water, it's pulled us out into being drops and isolated us from each other where we're not as strong as when we're in unity with you. Lord, and people are exhausted right now. So Lord, we're just asking for a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit over every member of our body that's been exhausted by the separation of the pandemic. Lord, we're also praying in the midst of this pandemic, not only have people gotten sick from the pandemic itself, but Lord, there are just tragedies after tragedies going on. And we're just praying for supernatural healing for every one of those. Lord, where there are people struggling, not only with the mental illness or with the mental anxiety or the anguish, we're praying for physical touch right now for members of our body that you would release a healing like has never been seen in our nation that there is no other way that it can be seen but as the work of god father we just ask for supernatural healings right now for the sick in our congregation we ask for supernatural healings for just the incurable diseases, the diseases that, that quote unquote can be contained, but have to go through intense radiation, et cetera, et cetera, to do. We're asking for divine touch over members of our body that are dealing with both of those situations. Lord, we're asking too for healing. Like I said, emotionally, there are just members struggling and suffering right now. So we're just asking for physical healing and emotional healing in this hour, Lord. And Lord, we're just, we just put everything before you today. We put our lives before you, Lord, and we, we ask for those of our body that have been, you know, that have, that those of our families in our body that are not with you yet, Lord, that are not following you yet. They've heard the message. Lord, they, they know you, 
would have been unwilling to receive you, accept your love, and find forgiveness and freedom in you. We're asking, Lord, for those, that you would bring them back to you. And Lord, we're just asking to, you know, that you would break the hold of this pandemic so that we can come together and, and worship you as a body. Lord, as, as just a complete body. It's so awkward to speak to a camera. I mean, it, 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 it's so much nicer to speak across to somebody in front of you. Lord, so we're just praying for a breakthrough on this pandemic that we could really meet as a body. And Lord, that everybody's protected and we can move forward together in you. But uh, we just put all these things into your hands, Lord. And we just trust you in this hour. Again, we ask forgiveness because we have missed you. We have done things that we perceive to be you. And we missed doing what the Father was doing. Or we have tried to project our comforts and our our wills onto you and have not been doing what the Father is doing. Lord, we repent. Lord, we just ask that you'd fill us with your spirit. Lord, and that you'd comfort us as we know that there's nowhere we can go, but that you won't find us. So we just thank you. This is our act of worship today as an assembly, Lord. And we pray that it would be pleasing in your sight. Hear our repentance, Lord, and show us what you're doing so that we can be doing it as well. In Jesus' name, amen. So I don't even know what time it is. Um, I lost track of everything there. It's 10.52, so we're going to take a couple minute break. Um, Pastor Oz and Pastor Jan are going to be preaching the word at 11. Um, again, you know, just for everybody, make sure that, um, you know, we, we post these on YouTube as well. Um, so make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you never know where to find any message from Lord of the Harvest, you can always go to lhcfwarren.com. Yeah, lhcfwarren.com. Oh, my gosh. I do this all the time. I, Andrea and I put the website together and I still, I, because we have some things that are lhcf.warren. So I always get the two confused. lhcfwarren.com. All, all the messages are up there. Um, you know, the podcast, audio, et cetera, et cetera. So anytime you're lost and, you know, where do I go to find this message? It, it, you can pretty much find everything at our website. So with that, um, just thank you, and uh, we look forward to hearing what Pastor Oz has to say and uh, what the Lord's speaking through him. So, Lord, open our, our ears to hear what you're speaking through, Pastor Oz, and, and every, everything we hear today, we pray the Lord that everything that you're trying to get through to us that we would do. In Jesus' name, amen. 